Many people say that the Muslim God and the God of the Bible are the same. The Quran versus Genesis, this week on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. My name is Calvin Smith. And I'm Richard Fangrad. And this week our topic is the Quran versus Genesis. That's right. Now whatever knowledge, whatever philosophy sets, its up, sets itself up against the knowledge of Christ, uh, other religions like Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Islam for example, a key to its demolition, you can have a look at 2 Corinthians 10.5 for this, a key to its demolition is to show that its view of origins, right. unlike Genesis, doesn't fit with reality. It's a key to its demolition. Uh, and, and so, in, in a sense, you can nip it in the bud, as they say. Right, because it's origins. Yeah. For example, many people ask, you know, do Jews and Christians and Muslims, do they worship the same God? Right. And, yeah. and, and you know, what, what does the Quran say about the Bible, for example? It's easy to show, actually, that Muslims do not worship the same God Christians do by looking at what the Quran says versus what Genesis, what the Bible says in, in the book of Genesis. Yeah, and many Christian commentators have sought to raise awareness of the fundamental doctrinal differences between the Quran and the Bible, yes. and we've done the same thing, but a few people are aware of how Muslims' holy book very starkly contradicts the biblical account of origins. It, yeah. there's, there's a huge contradiction there, and that's one of the areas we can explore. A lot of times people think it's, it's similar, but it actually yeah. isn't. Yeah. You know, one of the biggest points uh, is that Genesis provides a unified description of creation. The Quran actually right. doesn't. Uh, instead, what we, we, we see in the Quran is uh, fragmented passages that are scattered throughout many of its 114 chapters, or, or what's called surah uh, yeah. in, in the Quran. And uh, the tables that uh, you're going to see on your screen shortly, uh, basically take these fragments and, and uh, we're going to show a, a clearer picture of what the Quran says basically compared to the Bible. And the many contradictions that we're going to highlight in these tables actually demolish the, these claims of some Muslim apologists, uh, you know, that the revelation given to Muhammad is not a corruption, uh, but actually, right. you know, it supposedly reliably builds upon the Judeo-Christian history, but that's just not the case. Yeah, well, let's get into some of this right away. Um, now, the first topic we're going to tackle is, is the creation account itself. Right. And we can compare the Bible versus the Quran, and you're going to see uh, from this chart immediately that there are huge differences here. Right. So the Bible says, uh, we can start off with this, man was created on earth in the Garden of Eden. The Quran, on the other hand, says man was created in paradise, a jhana, not on earth. Uh, uh, the first, first couple later, later banished to earth there. So that, there's, there's a, a difference to begin with. That's right. Um, <clears throat> the Bible describes clearly what was made on each day of the creation week. Um, the Big Bang is excluded from this sequence. For example, um, you know, some even Christians would say, well, maybe God used the Big Bang. Right. But the Big yep. Bang says that the sun came first and the earth came later. The Bible says that God created the earth first and the sun came on day four. There's sequencing that, issues there. That doesn't yeah. fit at all. Yeah. Um, and actually the Quran, th there's no really clear details of each creation day. There's just these vague clustering of the days in, in Surah 41, 9 to 12, but nothing really specific about what God actually did. Okay, so there's a difference. Here's another one. Uh, creation in six days, which are clearly earth rotation days, so, so around 24 hours as measured by our clocks. Right. Uh, the Quran says creation is also in six days, but could easily be interpreted as millions of years. Right. There's mm -hmm. You can't easily interpret the biblical creation days as, as millions of years. The Hebrew text there is very specific that it is six earth rotation days. That's right. Um, also, man and animals were created vegetarian. Genesis 129 and 30 is very clear on this. There was no death and suffering in the original creation. Of course, this is a linchpin of biblical creationist, uh, you know, it is. what we talk yeah. about and, yeah. and Christians in general. Um, but, of course, in the Quran, carnivory, and, and thus, of course, death and suffering, was apparently integral to life on the, on the uh, created earth from the uh, very first. The Quran actually says that cattle were created for man to be eaten from the very beginning. So right, there, there's a huge stark that's contrast. A huge, it, there's a huge theological difference there. Exactly. It may not seem like much carnivory versus no carnivory, right. but the theological difference is huge at right. that point. If you can have death and suffering right from the beginning, then God is represented as a God that used death as a creative 
positive process. And then called it okay. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's another one. Man was created naked, uh, but not ashamed. The Quran speaks of Adam's of, of Adam and his wife's nakedness becoming apparent to them after they sinned. Uh, also implied in 7:22. Uh, it also implies that they were wearing some kind of of, of clothing raiment prior to uh, prior to the fall. That's right. That's a bit of a difference there. A bit of a difference. Yeah. All things were created through Christ and for Christ. We see this, uh, uh, you know, Christ was preexistent to creation. We see this in the scripture very clearly. But, uh, of course, in the Quran, Jesus Christ was a created being. And uh, we see that in, in uh, the Quran in, in 359. And it says, the similitude of Jesus before Allah is as that of Adam. He created him from dust. So we can already see some stark contrasts. And we're going to continue with this when we come back. Abraham's life left a legacy in many different ways, but have you ever stopped to consider the legacy of his Y chromosome? The Y chromosome is unique to men. Fathers pass it on to their sons. So according to the Bible, Abraham would have passed it on to Isaac, then to Jacob, whose descendants gave rise to the Jewish nation. Abraham also passed his Y chromosome to Ishmael, through whom Arab nations have come. A recent study of Y chromosomes in Jewish and Arab men strongly supports the biblical account that they are all descended from one man. The results, published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences USA, revealed remarkable similarity between the Y chromosomes of Jewish and Arab male populations. The results prompted one of the researchers to say, Jews and Arabs are all really children of Abraham. I'm not surprised. Are you? To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Welcome back. If you just tuned in, we're talking today about the Quran versus Genesis. Very controversial. Yes. So. Uh, some people would say that the God uh, of Islam is the same as the God of the Bible. Right. We've already seen massive differences, and we're just going to continue with these. Uh, uh, the, the next topic we're going to be talking about is one of corruption. We see bad things in this world. How did they get sure. here? The Bible says one thing. The Quran actually says something far different. For example, uh, the Bible says prior to sin, Adam and Eve were given uh, free access to the fruit of the tree of life. Genesis 2, 9 and, and 16 to 17. Of course, the Quran actually says the tree of eternity, which is equated with uh, giving eternal life in 720, hence comparable to the biblical tree of life, was the forbidden tree. Well, that's a, that's a stark contrast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It also says uh, in the Bible that the forbidden tree clearly identified as the, the tree of the, no, the knowledge of good and evil. It says, And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree of the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. So that's Genesis, and here's, here's the Quran. Uh, there's no mention of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, Quran uh, 7.19 uh, says this, O Adam, Dwell thou and, and thy wife in the garden and enjoy its good things as ye wish, but approach not this tree or ye run into harm and transgression. Right. Uh, how about the snake, you know, the serpent uh, in Eden? And Genesis 3 talks about this. Um, of course, in, in the Quran, there's no mention of snake or serpent or, or in the Quran, actually, except for the reference to Moses, you know, the stick to snake transformation that we read in, in the Bible as right. well. Yeah, in, in the Bible it says the serpent enticed Eve, uh, denying that she would die. That's in Genesis 3, 1 to 5. Surely you will not die, uh, Satan tells Eve. Well, in the Quran, Satan enticed Adam and his wife in Quran 20, uh, 1, 20. But Satan whispered to him, he said, O Adam, shall I lead thee to the tree of, to a tree of, to the tree of eternity and to a kingdom that never decays? Quran 7, 20 to 21 says, then began Satan to whisper suggestions to them. He said, The Lord only forbade you this tree, lest ye should become angels or such beings as live forever. All right, that's a stark contrast there. The Lord made, God made garments of skin for Adam and Eve and clothed them. This is when the fall happens. This right. is one of the first things that happens. Uh, there's a, a, a creature obviously killed at that point, and animal skins are, are given to Adam and Eve. And... Uh, of course, in the, in the Quran, there's the raiment mentioned, uh, but no mention of, of a skin, no evidence of see death now entering at that point because the Quran right. said that you know cattle were created for for you know death at, at the beginning. It was already around. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Whereas the Bible, oh, there's death in the, in the world after after sin. All right, here's another one. Uh, after the fall of Adam and Eve in in the Bible, 
uh, still on earth, but barred from Eden. In the Quran, Adam and Eve were shifted from paradise, which was apparently not on earth, down to earth. Right. So another difference. Yep. Yeah. After the fall, man will now eat, this is what the, the, the Bible says, uh, through painful toil and as a result of the curse on the land, uh, by the sweat of your brow, Genesis 3, 17 and 19. Uh, toil and sweat were an integral part of the original created earth, according to the Quran, uh, 90 verse 4. Verily, we have created man to toil and struggle from the beginning. So that was there from the beginning, all the evil, bad stuff and so on, not, a, not with Genesis. But, right. Uh, all right, here's another one. Let's keep going. Death in the Bible is called an enemy that entered after Adam sinned. And you can see the Bible references there for that. And there's many others as well. Yep. In the Quran, on the other hand, no reference is made to death being an enemy or any other. Uh, it, it's an integral part of the original created earth that's right. in the Quran. So again, that, that's, that, and that's a huge one. That is That's huge. a really big one because Absolutely. one of the biggest questions is where did evil come from? And the Quran and the Bible have radically different explanations for those. Exactly. The Bible says the ground is now cursed, the whole creation now groaning in bondage to decay. We see that throughout Scripture, that theme that God cursed the, gr the, the ground after Adam sinned and rebelled. In, uh, in the Quran, apparently, the bad things are not a consequence of the fall. As you mentioned, they're an integral part of the original creation. That means yeah, that yeah. God's character is directly affected uh, mm -hmm. depending on which yeah. book that you take as factual. And we'll be back. Creation Ministries International edifies the body of Christ by providing more than 30 years of Bible-supporting scientific research, delivered through speaking engagements, books, magazines, and a variety of media, much of which is archived on our website, creation.com. Did you know that if you read three articles on creation.com each day, it would take over seven years to read them all? Such a wealth of information didn't arise by chance, however. We do this through the faithful prayers and gifts of our supporters, which also fund ongoing research. Support the building up of the church by partnering with CMI. Donate today at creation.com slash donate. Welcome back to Creation Magazine Live. This week we're talking about Genesis versus the Quran. That's right. Now, we can see lots of things, for instance, uh, right away where there's big challenges yes. here. The Quranic yep. account uh, prohibits Adam from going anywhere near the forbidden tree, while Genesis says that uh, uh, God only commanded Adam not to eat of its fruit. Right. Uh, man has been placed in the garden to tend it, which seems to require physical access to each of these trees, right, for, for pruning, etc. Interestingly, the, the uh, Bible relates that Eve, who was deceived, you see that in uh, 1 Timothy 2.14, had misconstrued God's instruction to not eat of the fruit from the tree. Instead, uh, uh, also to mean not to touch it, right? So you see the way it's, right. it's, it's phrased there. She amplified God's command. Yeah, that's yeah. right, Genesis 3.3. Uh, 3. And yet Eve's distorted view, which is obviously wrong, is actually portrayed as truth in the Quran. Yeah. So <laughs> more, more differences here. The biblical account of origins also makes more sense of today's world than the Quran does uh, in, in the areas that we've already talked about, the presence of sin, evil in the world, right. uh, violence, death, the origin of languages, the origin of different racial groups and so on, skin shades, that type of thing. Uh, the history in the Bible there it provides a great explanation to, to all of these things. Right. Um, in, in particular, in, in Romans 8, it talks about the world being in bondage, like it's in the process of childbirth and so on. It's, mm -hmm. it's going downhill and that kind of thing. In contrast, the Quran makes God responsible for death and suffering in, in common with the long evolutionary uh, types of ideas, these, these, these non-Christian views and Eastern religions. It kind of mirrors that, uh, that type of idea. That's right. Well, let's continue with the idea of judgment. Uh, in the form of a catastrophe. Right. We've talked yeah, about this a lot, on. Noah's yep. flood. Uh, that's in Genesis, of course. The Bible says that Noah was the 10th generation from Adam. Genesis 5, 3 to 3 to 32, and Luke 3, 36 to 38. So both the Old and the New Testament. Um, and of course, we've got other biblical genealogies that allow us to date the flood to around uh, 4,300 years ago. Um, in the Quran, there's actually no clear genealogies given. So it's not really written the same as the Bible is as real history with right. real dates, yeah. real time. Real, uh, real this, people, this, this person lived that long and then the next person and the generations and so on. Exactly. Uh, here's another one. The ark is described in the Bible as sealed with pitch. A little fuzzy on exactly what that is, but it's possibly something like tree resin. Yep. Uh, in, in 
the Quran, the Ark is caulked with palm, uh, with, uh, palm fiber. Right. And so a bit of a difference there. Yep. Um, the Bible gives uh, Ark dimensions. There's an exact yes. size and, yep. and shape that the, the uh, Ark would be. Of course, the, the Quran doesn't even mention the, the Ark size. And of course, when you're trying to explain things like how did he get all the animals on the Ark, it's important to know the size of it so right. that you can have a good defense, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Bible says, uh, if, as far as the duration of the flood is concerned, there was 40 days and 40 nights of rain. Then there was 150 days, that's five months. The total duration is around 170 days, so a little, little bit over a year. And you can read that in, in various verses in Genesis. You can see there on the screen. Yep. The, the Quran mentions no time period uh, of, uh, about the flood, so a little, little difference there as well. I, and again, this, this the lack of detail really, it, it doesn't sound like real history anymore. It's just illusions or... You know, and that's why uh, we'll see later on that many modern Muslims are starting to incorporate evolution into their thinking because they say the Quran is fuzzy on this, etc. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the problem with taking dates out of, out of the, the, the stories in the Bible, the accounts in the Bible there is, as soon as you take the dates out of, out of some historical account, it becomes once upon a time. Which is a fairy tale. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the Bible says eight people survived the flood, 1 Peter 3, uh, 20. Uh, and, and, for example, all of Noah's family, that's what the Bible says, were, uh, survived the flood. But in the Quran, the number on board is not mentioned. The Quran claims that one of Noah's sons was drowned uh, in the flood and puts a question mark over whether Noah's uh, wife survived. You can read that in Surah 66, 10 and 11, 40. Okay, here's another difference. After the flood, man was granted permission to eat meat. Right. Genesis 9, verse 3. Uh, in the Quran, of course, we already mentioned this, man ate meat on the earth from the beginning. Right, yep. A uh, specific reason why that happened too, right? After the flood, the, the, the environment changes, people are spreading out all over the earth. If you're going to be an, uh, an Inuit and you're only going to eat plants, you're going to die. So God <laughs> gives a command, now you can eat meat, right? It, it makes sense with real history. Sure. Uh, another one here, I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. That's in Genesis 9, 11 to 17. In the Bible, there's no mention of the rainbow or its significance anywhere in the Quran. In the Quran yeah. And we'll be back. Many people scoff at the idea that all humans descended from a woman called Eve only thousands of years ago. But geneticists actually endorse a similar idea, known as mitochondrial Eve. By studying the DNA in cell parts known as mitochondria, scientists propose that all humans descended from a single woman that lived 200,000 years ago. But this date relies on evolutionary assumptions, chief of which is the idea chimpanzees and humans shared a common ancestor 6 million years ago. However, actual research has shown that mitochondrial DNA mutates much faster than this evolutionary estimate, and this drastically reduces mitochondrial Eve's age. This would mean that mitochondrial Eve, as a review in the prestigious journal Science said, lived about 6,500 years ago, a figure clearly incompatible with current theories on human origins, but it is compatible with the Bible's history. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Well, today we're covering the difference between, between the Quran and Genesis. We've seen a ton of differences so far, but we're going to continue uh, further on in the narrative here. Yeah, we talked about creation and the fall and then the flood, and now we're on to the Tower of Babel. That's right. So uh, let's see some differences there. Uh, the Bible says that before God confused the, the, the tongues, the languages at Babel, the whole world had one common language. But the Quran says, uh, that, or actually there's no mention ever of there being a single common language. Uh, or of the Tower of Babel. So there's, right. a, there's a major difference there. Right, because we can explain where the people groups came from by talking about the Tower of Babel. The Quran has yep. no answer for it. And the different it. language families and so on. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, after being scattered from uh, Babel, people congregated into clans and nations, each with their own languages. Um, of course, the Quran, regarding the different languages, the Quran in, in uh, Surah 3, 30, 22 says, And among his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth and the variations in your languages and your colors. So apparently it's saying there that, you know, all those things were created from the beginning, right? right. Not one, because the Bible is clear, from one man he created all nations of right. men. Yep. There weren't nations to start with. So Yeah, to list all the instances where the Quran uh, contradicts Genesis and contradicts the Bible would take very, very many pages right. and, and far, far more time than we have today. 
Uh, but the following examples uh, suffice to show that, that there are some significant differences right. between how the Quran teaches about origins in ancient history and the Bible. Uh, the Bible says that salvation comes only through Jesus Christ. That's mentioned in John 14, 6, for example, Acts 4, 12, and, and elsewhere. Uh, while the Quran says that only through Islam, obedience to Allah and his prophet Muhammad, can one avoid the, quote, blazing fire. Right. The Quran denies Christ's death and resurrection. Uh, that's pretty important to Christians. Yeah. Various passages in the Quran <laughs> say that Allah made it appear to the Jews as if, as if Jesus was crucified. But in the meantime, Allah took Jesus up to heaven. Uh, while the Bible says that uh, uh, as descendants of Adam, all are born with a sinful nature, the Muslim view is that man is born innocent, and the Quran refers to sin as earned. Not, you're not born with sin, yeah. uh, it, it, it's earned through your lifetime. Yeah, Again, huge, huge difference to our theology. Difference. Yeah. The Quran denies that God is triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Muslims do not address God as Father, uh, believing that no man can ever be the Son of God. And Christians call Christ, uh, uh, and the Christians call Christ the Son of Allah, Allah's curse be on them. Uh, um, how they are deluded away from the truth is what it says in 9, 30 to 31. That's right. Well, the Bible says that it's by grace that we're saved, through faith alone, not by works, lest any man should boast. We read that in Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. The Quran tells a very different story. Uh, it says, Then those who, whose balance of good deeds is heavy, they will attain salvation. But those whose balance is light will be those who have lost their souls. In hell they will abide. So what it actually teaches here is that there's a, a, a balance between good works and bad works. And what it's you a works-based religion, just like about any other religion except Christianity. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now while the Bible calls Christians to go and make disciples of all nations, you find that in the Great Commission in Matthew 28, this is to be done with gentleness and respect. In 1 Peter 3, 15 and 16. Yep. Christians don't use weapons to, to uh, you know, weapons of the world to preach the gospel. And, uh, uh, but for Muslims, a very different approach is, is, is required and prescribed in the Quran. Uh, for example, it says, they fight and slay the pagans wherever ye find them, or, or then fight and slay the pagans, and seize them, beleaguer them, and lie in wait for them in every stratagem of war, but if they repent and establish regular prayers and practice regular charity, then open the way for them. It's a very different way of salvation than for Christians. It also says, I will instill terror into the hearts of unbelievers. Smite ye above, the necks, uh, above their necks and smite all their fingertips off them. That's right. Wow. Um, that's a little bit different way of trying to convert people to, uh, to believe in your God, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, another difference. While the Bible instructs a husband never to be harsh with his wife and to, be, and to sacrificially love her as Christ loved the church, Christ is our, is our example here, and not to deprive one another, the Quran actually says, as to those women on whose part ye fear disloyalty and ill conduct, admonish them first, next refuse to share their beds, and last beat them. So again, yeah. we're seeing a, a complete difference here. Um, the Bible says that God's love, uh, the Quran, does not. And we'll be back with some of these differences uh, in, in just one moment. Genesis Verse by Verse is a Bible study tool available on CMI's website, designed to help pastors, students, and laymen alike study the book of Genesis like never before. And it's completely free. Simply look up any verse in Genesis 1 to 11, or just scroll down the page. The center column, provides links to articles that answer common questions pertaining to that verse and the topics that naturally arise from them. Visit creation.com to use it today. We've been talking this week about the Quran versus Genesis and there's a great resource that you can get this DVD by one of our scientists, Dr. David Kachapool, Creation Evangelism in an Islam-Aware World. Mm -hmm. Now, if you order this online, we'll give you a special coupon code. You can get 50% off of this DVD. It's a great one-hour presentation by Dr. Kachapool. And uh, the, the coupon code you want to enter when you check out of the web store is CMLIAW, Islam Aware World. Creation Magazine Live, IAW. And uh, type that in, you get 50% off of this great talk by Dr. David Kachapool, one of our scientists. That's right. 
Now with the increased adoption of evolution-based curricula um, we see in the Western world, some Muslim leaders and scholars uh, began to recognize the threat to Islam from a rising tide of evolutionary thinking, same thing that's happened to Christians, right. and their response has been to either attack evolution or to more commonly try to blend it with Islam. So the, the creationist Muslims claim that the theory of evolution and the Holy Quran are, uh, are in direct conflict with each other and no compatibility is possible anywhere. As a matter mm. of fact, new yeah. scientists reported that Islamic creationist books cite and copy crea Christian creationists, <laughs> but they, they take out the biblical references. Yes, of course. Right. Yeah, interesting. Uh, however, evolution-believing Muslim, Muslims seem to be far more numerous and, and vocal than their creationist Muslim counterparts. Right. Uh, they have a substantial strategic advantage uh, precisely because the Quran is so vague and, and seemingly open to various interpretations. Right. They, uh, they delight in pointing out that in contrast, uh, quote, there is absolutely no ambiguity whatsoever in the biblical description of the creation in six days, followed by a day of rest, the Sabbath, analogous with the days of the week. Similar to Christian, uh, Christian long-age thinkers and, and theistic evolutionists right. and, and those kinds of things, evolution-accommodating Muslims are adamant that the days of creation in the Quran really mean long periods of time, ages or eons, that What's kind of thing. What's interesting, though, is so, they're saying, look, they're saying, that the, the Islamic uh, uh, evolutionists are saying, look, the Quran can fit with evolution, but the yes. Bible can't fit with evolution. But they're, uh, like you said, <laughs> well, the Christian long ages and atheist, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, theistic evolutionists, yes. they're not noticing that difference? Uh, yeah. That it doesn't fit with the Bible? Hmm. Interesting. Um, now Muslim apologists, they gleefully point out that the Quran is compatible with evolution where the Bible is not. Uh, here's an example. Neither here nor elsewhere, uh, anywhere else in the Holy Quran, is it affirmed that Adam was the first man, or that there was no creation by God before Adam, nor that Adam lived or man was created, or the earth was made only 6,000 years ago. See the Here's a quote from a, from a Muslim. He's saying, look, this is what the Bible says, this is what the Quran says, yeah. and the Quran fits with evolution, and yeah. the, the yeah. Bible Hooray. doesn't. We'd, yeah. we'd agree with them, actually. <laughs> yeah. Now, long-age Muslims also exploit the Bible's explicit detail of the, of the flood as well. Right. They say that the, because the Bible uh, clearly says that there was a recent global flood, while science, uh, in quotes, yeah. says there was not, the Bible is wrong, and the Quran is thus confirmed to be right. right. That's another... Uh, argument they'll give. Some Muslim literature even claims that the Quran shows that Allah revealed to Muhammad details about the Big Bang, the right. ancient universe and evolution long before scientists uh, began to discover such uh, quote-unquote facts. Right. Now a further challenge for the Muslim world would concern the presence of death, suffering, grief. We mentioned this earlier yes. um, in the world and, and, and when you consider the following exchange between uh, American TV show host Larry King and, and Georgetown University's Islamic professor of theology, um, Mr. Uh, Al Farooqi, um, King said, well, uh, if you believe in heaven and paradise, then dying is good? And Farooqi said, absolutely, and dying is perfectly natural. It's the end of things. And you can see right there that death is built right into this system of Islamic belief. Right. Complete yeah. difference with the Bible. We'll see you next time.